The story of a magic book, the owner of which gains an understanding of ancient knowledge and may even be able to use magic, is a popular theme in the world of legends and fantasy. While such stories should of course always be viewed with a good deal of skepticism, there are certainly examples from real-world history in which books are ascribed secret black magic knowledge. While some of the books have been lost over the centuries and are now just a myth as a footnote to history, the content of other copies is still known and it can be concluded that the belief in demon summoning and black magic may not be as otherworldly as it would initially seem. Some of these books certainly do seem to hold some sort of strange supernatural content. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to hear about one of the most bizarre black magic books ever found. Clavicula Salomonis the Grimoire, the Key of Solomon, is a collection of spells and magical rituals attributed to the biblical King Solomon. If one believes the history of distribution, then he's said to have made the book for his son, who then hid it in his father's grave. Babylonian workers are said to have come across the book during renovation work, which then spread around the world. In reality, it can be assumed that the manuscript was created sometime between the late 15th and early 16th centuries and was particularly popular in European circles during the Renaissance. The Clavicula of Solomon is divided into two books. While the first book is mainly about summoning angels and demons, curses and spells, the second book is about purification and exorcism to cure one's possession. In doing so, the power of angels is used in the incantations, which should help to summon the necessary magic with their divine power. To this day, the grimoire is considered to be particularly popular and can be purchased as a transcript in various languages and may have inspired several other works over time. Books like this should not be taken lightly, however. While we can almost all most likely agree that the contents of the book are purely for entertainment purposes, there are some around the world who claim to have cast real spells and curses with the book. In all reality, these cases should likely be taken with a grain of salt, but it's always best to exercise caution with this type of thing. We never truly know what we're dealing with. Ars Notoria one of the grimoires inspired by the Key of Solomon is the Ars Notoria. It's considered to be one of Solomon's small works and is usually accompanied by an insight into the larger collection. To this day, it's not entirely certain when the book was created. It's said to have first appeared in Europe during the 17th century, making reference to spells and events going back to the 12th century. The oldest copy of the work also supposedly dates from this period, although there are strong doubts about the history of origin. Above all, it shows a large number of illustrations, 32 in number, which are said to have been used for certain rituals. There are also prayers and incantations which usually have the purpose of making contact with one of the many angels from the Bible or a demon from the depths of hell. It's a supplement and continuation of the thoughts and magic that were already indicated in the Great Key of Solomon, and according to those who've read this smaller book, there are many references to the Key of Solomon, suggesting that the book may in fact be genuine. This book is far less common to find copies of. In fact, most people don't seem to know that it exists. Some are insistent that the contents of this book can truly tap into supernatural powers, though we can't be so sure. As with everything, we have to remain skeptical until real-world evidence presents itself. I don't know about you, but I've not heard any stories of real-world possessions, curses, or anything of the like in modern history. Because of this, it seems safe to say that this book is likely nothing more than a hoax. But there is a real possibility that the book is genuine. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the one to find out for sure. The Sworn Book of Honorius 
King Solomon is a popular figure in medieval grimoires. At that time, the king was said to have a variety of magical powers from the Bible. The stories about Solomon are also said to have inspired a certain Honorius of Thebes to write a book. The Liber Sacer, or the Sworn Book of Honorius, is a collection of spells, rituals, and magical knowledge. According to the story, recognized magicians and sorcerers of their time should have met and recorded their entire higher magical knowledge in 93 chapters. The naming of the Liber Sacer is seriously attested from historical sources in the middle of the 14th century and was probably part of a court hearing. Although little is known about the author, the contents include incantations and spells, but also intensive prayers and explanations about how heaven is structured and what the role of demons and angels might be. It's thus a highly spiritual record, capturing the debate of the time and supplemented with sigils, incantations, and rituals modeled after the understanding of magic at the time. What's truly interesting about this book and its relation to King Solomon is that, as we all know, the Psalms of Solomon, or Songs of Solomon, depending on your translation, are true biblical books that we know without a doubt can be attributed to Solomon. However, there's one additional book that isn't found in the modern Bible that was known as the Wisdom of Solomon. While Songs of Solomon mostly covers the trials and tribulations of the family unit, the Wisdom of Solomon takes things much further and details the pursuit of knowledge that Solomon supposedly encountered. This book is not considered to be canon, and we don't know for sure if it was written by Solomon or if it's a forgery. The book speaks a lot about wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, as well as the nature of wisdom and the role that wise men had in ancient Israel's history. However, opposed to other books such as Psalms and Proverbs, the book is not a literal collection of wisdom and wise quotes. Rather, it purely speaks of Solomon's search for higher knowledge. What makes this book so interesting in this context is that if Solomon truly found the wisdom he was looking for, there's a chance that some of these spiritual books that have been attributed to him may in fact be genuine. If Solomon passed along his knowledge of heaven, hell, demons, spells, and curses, that makes the books we've been discussing today all the more eerie. Though, since these books were written more than a thousand years apart, that would be a bit of a stretch to claim with any real certainty. Picatrix while many of the books mentioned so far have had a niche existence in history, the Picatrix was one of the most important books of occult knowledge in the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance. The book, originally published in Arabic under the title The Goal of the Wise, was first translated into Spanish and finally into Latin in the early Middle Ages. The book is less concerned with applied magic, but rather a compendium on a variety of mystical topics. In addition to to alchemy. Astrology is also represented here, and all in all, much of the content is a first approach to dealing with processes that are taken for granted in modern times. The book passed through many hands over the course of time and determined the debate about occult magic and esotericism, especially during the Renaissance. Since the Arab scientists were said to have knowledge that the Christian Western world never reached, it was a new approach to the debate. It was less about magic and more about a fascination with subjects taught and debated outside of medieval scholarship and especially outside of church dogma. Galdra Book the Galdra Book Grimoire is proof that the use of magic was not only reserved for the Middle Ages, but sometimes extended well into modern times. The book, which was originally written around 1600, is a collection of spells and sigils that are particularly deeply rooted in Icelandic culture, but they don't just deal with the use of this magic. The book also focuses very much on the culture of the Nordic country. Iceland is still very much associated with original traditions and cultures, and magic has always been a part of the island's folklore. It's no wonder, then, that additions to this original grimoire continued into the 20th century. While some parts of the book are about magic, others are also about natural healing and proper worship of the original gods. 
In particular, the medical indications that were then understood as magic would still survive the test of natural medicine for effectiveness today. Books like this are important to reference even in today's world. While modern medicine as a whole has taken things to a new level in terms of effectiveness and treatment options, there's still a lot of benefit that can be found in more natural remedies. Even these days, we're learning a lot about cancer research and treatment opportunities from our ancestors. After all, several natural remedies now claim to cure serious ailments, including but not limited to cancer. Our ancestors may not have had the wealth of knowledge that we have today. However, they did have access to ancient knowledge that may have been forgotten in more modern times. Pseudomonarchia Demonum the Pseudomonarchia Demonum, or the False Hierarchy of Demons, is a peculiarity among the occult books of the Middle Ages. Written by a Dutch doctor, it mainly deals with the misbeliefs within the occult society and some popular books of the time. It's all about the question of how the different demons of the underworld, 69 in number, are to be classified and whether there actually is a hierarchy. In addition, he describes the characteristics of the different demons, their powers, and how to properly worship them. There are also references to other beings from hell in many parts of the text, and every now and then, a hint is given as to how to summon and bind the spirit of such a being. At the same time, the author takes a critical look at the work of witches and wizards. So, all in all, it's both an encyclopedia about demons and a diatribe about those who, in the author's opinion, used magic in the wrong way, or were even simply imposters who wanted wanted to rip money out of ordinary people's pockets without knowing anything about the subject. Black Pullet Who exactly the Black Pullet came from is still not certain. If you believe the stories surrounding the book, then it was a soldier from the Napoleonic army who had to save himself after an attack in Egypt and was treated by an Egyptian healer. This not only healed the wounds of the soldier, but is also said to have taught him the various teachings of original magic that are no longer taught today, or whose parchments have been destroyed over time. The Black Pullet therefore deals primarily with spells for talismans and artifacts and is intended to teach the reader how to properly handle the powers of these objects. The book also goes into the story of the hen that lays golden eggs. The secret is said to be between the lines of the book, and whoever can solve the riddle will bring unlimited wealth. It remains one of the most popular works of talismanic magic to this day, and has been reprinted many times over the centuries, with slight modifications to the original version. Book of Abramelin the Book of Abramelin first became popular in the 19th and 20th centuries, although it's believed to have originally been written in the 14th century. It's said to be about the traditions of an Egyptian magician who shared his knowledge with a Jew. It was also about the magic of talismans, which was particularly popular and widespread in the Middle Ages in the Arab world. Primarily using the power of words as a starting point, the creator creates talismans of immense power that can both harm and protect the wearer from harm. The reason the book was so late in becoming popular was largely due to a lack of translations. Although there were first manuscripts in the 17th century, these were far from being as widespread as a German translation from the 19th century. Many authors of that time also looked at the writings and evaluated them, whereupon the contents of the magic book quickly spread, especially in Europe. The books in this video sometimes differ significantly in their content, while some deal with magic. Others deal primarily with the original medicine and astrology, of which we now know that many things written at that time were true. What other books and events can you think of that would also fit in this video? Thank you for watching. Click on one of the pictures and watch another exciting video. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and to never miss new videos again, click subscribe and we'll see you again soon.